Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing okay this morning. We are talking about um, Psalms 12 and the words of the Lord. And there's nothing more exciting than the words of God. Nothing um, more pure or more um, helpful <laughs> than the words of God. So um, starting in Psalms 12, we're going to be in 1 through 8. And we have a couple of verses that we're going to pull out. Good morning, Michelle. And um, kind of zoom in on those, but this is a pretty short psalm. So um, it says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off the flattering lips and the tongues that speaketh proud things. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Jewel. Good morning. It says, Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? That's the part. Okay, it's submitting our words. Who have said with our tongues we will prevail, or we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Good morning, Heidi. Okay, so we know that the Word of God, we, we get in the Word every day. Good morning, Robbie. And we say, you know what, this, this Word is life. This word, it, it's a, a bridge to the Lord. It's his heart. It's his will for us. We're going to take the time, invest in this word, learn it, try to be as obedient as we can, repent when we miss the mark. But this word is gold to us. And we submit ourselves to it. And now what, what we're reading in Psalms is the Lord wants us to submit our own words, not just submit to his words, but let him be Lord over our own words because in the tongue is the power of life and death. We, we speak matters. And that is such a struggle because that tongue is, um, it's hard to get a hold of, isn't it? But but here we see folks that have not submitted their tongue and they, they say, um, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? How do we know that the Lord God, is, Jesus, is Lord of our lives is by this tongue, by this what we say. And, and so verse 5 says, For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. So the words of God are the most pure things in the whole entire world is the word of God. And um, in verse 4, it talks about what we said about submitting. And it says puffeth. Let's um, find that. Um, and that's actually, I think, in verse 2. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off the flattering lips and the tongues that speaketh proud things. Um, that's it. And it talks about um, puffing up. And puffing up is um, bringing into a snare. It's, it's bringing someone into a snare with your words. It is is breaking somebody. It, 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 the word puff means to break or bring into a snare. And um, verse 7 says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. Um, and so, oh, okay, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. So those who have not submitted their words are creating a snare for others, a trap for other people to fall in. But the words of God are pure. They're clean. If we go to Hosea 13, um, it talks about idols. Idols made with words. Let me find it here. In the wrong direction. Okay, Hosea 13, 1 through 3. Um, and it says, When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel, but when he offended in Baal, he died. And now they sin more and more and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding, all of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, Let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. We talked the other day about kiss the sun, lest he be angry. That means to worship. And so here we have this uh, picture of the people in Psalms 12 who have not submitted their words. And what are they doing? They are so unsubmitted that they have created silver gods out of silver. 
they've created images to worship out of silver. And that's in direct contrast to Psalms 12 that tells us the word of God is like silver. It's pure. It's been tested and tried. It's refined. You can't get anything more. Um, nothing is more uh, precious than the word of God, than the promises of God, his thoughts, his heart. Nothing is better. And yet man will do the complete opposite and we will take what should be just a metal on the earth, right? Something God created. And then we create images out of this and we still do it today. Amen. We still do it out of our televisions and our cars and our bank accounts and our homes and whatever else. We still make these things that we worship today. And we say this is just as valuable as the word of God. Why do we do that? I don't know. We're built. It's built into us. But we've all done it at some point because we're all human. We just have to catch it and repent of it. And, and know that if the Lord is saying, hey, you've made an, an idol out of this thing. You're worshiping this thing. We've got to say, oh, Lord, forgive me, and we're going to set that aside. Because in the book of Hosea, the Lord was was not pleased um, because they, they said, um, let the men that sacrifice kiss the calves. They're going to worship those calves. It says, therefore, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passeth away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. But here's where God steps in with his mercy. He says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. The Lord is so invested in his people. Even before the blood of Jesus, he's saying, I I'm going to fix this. I'm going to work on this with them. It says, I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. Remember the Lord, he says I, to Israel, I'm the God who brought you out of Egypt. He says that over and over. I brought you out of Egypt. And so in Hosea, they're making idols out of their words, out of their own understanding. They forget God and they forget the promises of God. But the Lord is still merciful and still cares about them and wants to do um, what's right for them, even though they're not acting right. And in verse 14, we, hear, we see a promise there's a lot of stuff that the Lord's like, this is going to happen. This isn't good. You're not going to like all this. But in verse 14, he says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. And we know that he does that through Jesus Christ. That his word is good. What he said he's going to do, he, he does. He did it. <laughs> he did it. He ransomed them. Um, and so Jesus doesn't mind ransom, ransoming us from Egypt, from our bondage, from the thing that is pulling us into some kind of idol worship. He will redeem us from that and help us and be a very present help in trouble. And how is he going to help us? He does it through these pure words that are not, they're not tainted. There's nothing... In them that we have to go, mm, I'm not sure about that. It's just a place of peace and rest in a world where our discernment is constantly having to go, is that of God? Is that of God? Is that of God? Because there's so much that is not of God. We can find just a place of just mental enjoyment <laughs> and give that, that part a break and let the Holy Ghost just take over Take over our words, our thoughts, our understanding. Let him be Lord of our life and submit to his understanding, his ways, his thoughts. And just rejoice and enjoy the word of God. Amen. It is a, it is a place of enjoyment. It's not a, a burden. It's not something we have to, oh, i got to read the word today. Oh, I didn't read my Bible today. Oh, my goodness. It, if, it's like the more you do it, the more you want to do it. It's like exercise or eating a salad. <laughs> the more we do it, the more we want to do it. We just have to get in there and get going. Um, you know, whenever we eat poorly, I eat bad. I like sugar. Oh, my goodness. I love it. And I love, you know, I like to eat things, chocolate, sweets. 
And the more I eat, the more I want to eat. But if I will stop and I will choose an apple instead, the more of that I eat, the more I want to eat. And so it's it's sort of just our, our will, right? Um, amen. Amen. So if we go to Exodus 32, talking about worshiping things that aren't God. And I love that he's like, these words are like silver because he knows, he knows we understand, you know, concrete things. And, and yet in the Bible, they're, they're always making idols out of silver and gold. <laughs> um, okay. So th this is, um, Exodus, uh, Exodus 32. And this is when Moses is on the mountain. And they've waited and they've waited for Moses and they get tired of waiting on God. They get tired of waiting on Moses. And they, um, Aaron has this idea. What is his idea? He says, break off the golden earrings which are in your ear, in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters and bring them unto me. So he's talking to the men of the camp and he's saying, go get those golden earrings. I've got a plan. I've got something we're going to do. The people are restless and he was afraid of man. He was afraid they were going to get so restless. I don't know. Maybe a, a fight would break out or who knows. But he's like, I got an idea. <laughs> so go get those golden earrings. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And so that word break off. When it, um, I looked that up in Strong's. And it is the same word, the same Hebrew word that is used for redemption um, and deliverance. It's only, it's the opposite here, right? So Aaron's like, break off, deliver them from their, their waiting, deliver them from their restlessness, deliver them because they can't wait any longer. So let's deliver them through those gold earrings. Good morning, Larry. And um, let's, let's, let's make a way. Aaron's like, I'm going to make a way for these people. And so they take those gold earrings and they melt them down and they make a calf out of it. Um, let's see. Um, okay, and he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Now that sounds ridiculous. When we read that, we think, what in the world? <laughs> Why? They know God did it. They know these golden earrings did not part those waters. They know that the only reason they have all that gold is because God had Egypt give it to them on their way out. And yet, because they got tired of waiting, they said they lost their their understanding of what actually happened. And they created that calf, and they said, "This is what brought us out of Egypt. And now we're going to worship it. We're going to we're going to kiss this calf. We're going we're going to make this calf our God." Can you imagine how angry and how hurt the Lord must have been? He was up there dealing with Moses, creating the commandments, a covenant with his people. And because they couldn't hang on just a little bit longer, they totally ignored him, said, he is no longer our God. I mean, that hurts. That hurts my heart for the Lord. I can imagine how painful that was to him to see that, to see his people. And his, his wrath got stirred up right? He, it wasn't a, a compassion. It was, he wants to destroy them. So if you go to verse seven, it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. Now God is telling Moses, you brought these people out, but that's because God is making Moses a leader and God treats Moses like a leader. And so he says, you brought them out. It says, they have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshiped it and have sacrificed there unto and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. And now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may vax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. But what does Moses do? We talked about this yesterday. Moses intercedes for Israel. Moses interceded for Miriam and Aaron when God was mad, and he made her a leper. And God said, please don't kill them. <laughs> and Moses does the same thing here. He's saying, please don't kill them. And if we continued on, we would see that Moses, he besought the Lord thy God and said, why did the wrath hot, 
Why do, doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt? And now Moses is turning around. I didn't do it, God. You did it. You brought them out. You can't just get rid of them because you're responsible for them. And the, Moses, he is bold with God. And that's why it says, come boldly to the throne of grace. We need help. In our, in our time of trouble, we've got to go boldly to God and say, Lord, these, these are the kids that you made. Lord, these are the promises that you made. These are the words that you've spoken. This is what your word says. And it's like silver. And it has been tried and tested. And it is true. And so grab a hold. We've got to get some of that Moses boldness. That just comes, it's the Holy Ghost, amen? It's the same, the same spirit Moses was walking in. We've got that same spirit with us, the Holy Ghost, and say, hey, God, you know what? These are your people. There's a covenant. You said that you would um, make the grave or, <laughs> you know, be an enemy to the grave. You said this. You said that. Lord, do it. I was reading a thing um, yesterday, and it said suicide is the third biggest killer of adolescence terrible terrible if you've ever fought against that spirit you know that spirit it wants life it wants to take life but god is the avenger of life god will keep us he has a promise his words are like silver so the israelites they they got tired of waiting but we're not going to be like them we're not going to get tired of waiting and just do our own thing and that's such a fear because god will tell you to do something and you're like, I know this is God, but then you kind of have this thought in your head that, oh, maybe that's me, and I'm just being like Sarah, and I'm creating something, some kind of solution to the problem. Y'all know what I'm talking about there? You've kind of got these two directions at the same time. But um, those who fear haven't been made perfect in love. And so we know if we're walking in love and obedience to God, we're worshiping God. We're not creating a calf to worship but we're worshiping god through what he tells us to do through the works of our hands then we are doing right we're still on that path hi Jeanette. hi becky good morning and i just believe that the lord wants us to know today that his words are true it doesn't matter how long we wait it doesn't matter hosea the book of hosea they made idols out of their own understanding they made idols out of silver and in the book of exodus they made idols out of gold we're not going to be like that. Um, if we go to John 15, 1 through 3. Okay. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. We talk about that all the time, but how are we made clean? Through the word of God. We are pruned through these words that are perfect. Because they are perfect, and we are imperfect, when we stand next to them, when we eat them, consume them, they wash us and make us better, and, and we conform to the word of God. Um God works through his word. We cannot get where he is taking us without his word and without a desire to, to submit our words to his words. And so it's by his spirit, but through his word and that we are tested, pruned, just like these words have been tested. If we go to Numbers 19 um, through, or 23, I'm sorry, Numbers 23, we have a promise, a promise from God. Um, and so this is Baal, Balaam, and uh, Balak, and he was going to, uh, he was called to curse Israel. But here's what he says. He says, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he hath blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Has God not said it, and will he not do it? Has he not promised, and will he not come through? The Lord is not a man that he should lie. These words are perfect. 
And so in Psalms 12, we see those, those folks. Remember Psalms, it's always dividing the righteous from the unrighteous. The righteous seek after God's heart. The unrighteous do these things. And the unrighteous, they, um, they speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. They set up snares with their mouths. And the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? And so it's just a reminder about how pure the words are. And we know that we need to love this word. And years ago, maybe five, six years ago, I sat down at this table with my Bible and I said, Lord, I love worship. I love to worship you. I love it. I love worship. But I know I need to love this word as much as I love worship. I need to love this word as much as I love you. I need to love this word. Will you help me? And he has helped me love this word. And it just grows and grows and grows. And I'm not where I should be. Amen. I, or I don't know. That sounds like condemnation. Um, I'm ex here, here's the thing. We're exactly where we are where God wants us because we're seeking Him. That's better than that, okay? That's better than condemning. I don't know if you've ever heard, like, you sh don't should on yourself. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. But don't should. I should do this. I should do that. I should have done this. We can get that way. I do that. We condemn ourselves with our I should have. But we are exactly where we're at, where the God wants us, and He is growing that love of his word in us and making it just the most important things in our life. The most important thing is this word. It's not even people. It's not, it's not situations. It's not even, it's not even the promise that's coming. It's just the word of the promise. Amen. It's just the God of the word. That's how we find Jesus is through this Bible. So, and um, we're going to pray today that that love would even intensify because sometimes we can get away from our first love. That, that has happened to me. I have walked away from, not intentionally, but just been so busy in doing that I forgot how much I love Jesus and that he was the reason for the doing. Amen. And so he's brought us back, brought me back into this first love where I don't want to get away from him. I don't want to get away from this Bible, and yet I do. Amen. I do. I know this is life, and yet we go after these other molten images. God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for when we've chosen something that wasn't you. And, and I don't know that he expects us to sit at a table 24 hours a day and just read his Bible, but he expects us to love it, to know it, to, to want to follow it, and to do the best we can to be led by the Holy Ghost and the conviction of the Holy Ghost and to do right by other people through obedience to the word. So in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this word. I thank you for my friends. I thank you for a desire, God, that life is in this word. And as we eat it and drink from this cup, God, that life is being poured into us. Lord, that you have come against the grave, Lord, that evil cannot win. The devil cannot win. He has no power and no authority next to the word of God. And as we submit ourselves to this word and we submit our mouths to this word, that we would speak things that are of God and not things that are against God and against God's people and against um, the will of God, Lord, that our our words would be on that narrow path it's not just our feet and not just our hands that are out doing the word of god but it's our mouths that would be on a very narrow place lord that we would just speak life and encouragement and good godly conversation lord that it would be um, life-giving to other people. So forgive us, Lord, when we've strayed. Forgive us for when we got tired of waiting and we made images um, that we worshipped out of other things, Lord, that have no power and no authority and bring no life. God, forgive us. But help us to love you even more. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Lord, I'm asking for just an outpouring of that love, that first love to be on our day, God, that wherever we go, Lord, we would treat people well. We would treat them right. God, forgive us for when we haven't. And thank you, Lord, for stirring this up in us, Lord. This obedience, our mouths to be obedient 
and, and not to, to stray from you. So we, we, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, I love y'all so much. And I am so grateful that y'all meet with us, <laughs> that we get together as this group. And amen. And that we, we can um, just dig into the word of God. And, and oh, it's so, isn't it good? Isn't it good? Don't you want to just like, I wish I could just eat it like a, I mean, like literally eat the word of God, but it's so satisfying and so good just to be in it and, and speak the word. I just want to encourage you to speak it out loud. Get into the book of Psalms and speak it out loud. Pray those exact words back to God. And I just, I think he loves that and you will get a taste for it. And it will teach you how to pray with boldness because these are prayers. The Lord is faithful. Amen. All right, guys. Y'all have a great day, a blessed day in the Word of God. And I want to I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut some things down, some idols down. Amen. Wherever the Lord is convicting, I, I'm gonna walk away from some of that stuff. Not that we're out doing some gross sin, but. You know, there are things that we choose to do when we could be choosing the Word of God instead. So so let's work on that today together. Amen. <laughs> All right. Love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 5 a.m. Have a really great day. Bye.